Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call to order this Tuesday, May 21st, 2024 study session of the Pierce County Council. The time is 12.04 p.m. All members are present except for Vice Chair Campbell, who is excused. We're at item number two, review of today's regular council meeting agenda. Ms. Long, good afternoon. Thank you and good afternoon. This is this afternoon's regular council meeting agenda. It is amended. We did review the consent agenda yesterday, but I'll just note that the five grants that were discussed have been added. So you'll see all of those there on your consent agenda. So I'll move to section seven. Uh, there is one proclamation this afternoon and that's proclaiming Monday, May 27th as Memorial Day in Pierce County. And that was requested by council member Herrera. Under section eight resolutions, you have one item and uh, recall this was continued from last week's council meeting. This is our 2024 158S, uh, uh, approving certain council initiated amendment requests and other land use and policy considerations as part of the preferred alternative for the comprehensive plan periodic update. Uh, this was originally forwarded as substituted without recommendation at CDC on April 29th and there are amendments to this resolution. Under section nine ordinances, uh, first up is O2024-515, and this was also continued from last week's regular council meeting. Uh, this is vacating a portion of Snellstrom Bush County Road. Uh, this received a due pass at EIDC on April 23rd, and it is ready um, to take action on the notice requirements have been satisfied. But, uh, number two and three are both um, granting non-exclusive franchises to the city of Ording. Uh, the first, O2024-519, is for the location of sewer lines. And the uh, second one, O2024-520, is for the location of water lines. And both of these received due pass recommendations at EIDC on May 14th. And those are your agenda items for this afternoon's meeting. Thank you, Ms. Long. Questions before we rebrief on amendments to the Comprehensive Plan Environmental Impact Statement Preferred Alternative. I don't see hands. So, Mr. Kruger, let's uh, let's brief on the amendments that will be before the council this evening on the preferred alternative for the Comprehensive Plan's Environmental Impact Statement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, my Kruger Council staff. I wanted to hand this out for the benefit of the members today to um, to see how the sequence of amendments has been have been restructured following study session yesterday. So what you'll see here are amendments that do not uh, follow a numerical sequence. Um, they're not in order. And the reason for that is that the, so several of the amendments have been grouped into kind of categories. There's also amendments that uh, were prepared for council on May 14th that were pulled by the sponsors. And so those are just gone. They, they don't show up anywhere now. They won't be in your packets. Um, so starting with number one, uh, amendment number one is uh, kind of a technical amendment. It concerns the transmittal of the proposal to council. It's uh, specifically requesting that the comprehensive plan and the capital facilities plan be provided to council no later than October 1st, and that the rest of the implementing documents, including community plan updates, uh, are transmitted to council by October 15th. So that's amendment number one. Amendment number two is an amendment concerning short-term rental housing. And what this amendment would do is it would review the policy considerations that were um, amended into the proposal at Community Development and Environment Committee. So there were a number of items that were included to provide additional detail uh, related to ADUs and the length of time that a short-term rental could be occupied and some things along those lines. Those have all been removed and the amendment uh, reverts back to the proposal that came up from the department um, and the executive um, concerning a, uh, a staff recommendation. Uh, kind of high level policies are included um, that talk about short-term rentals, but all the specificity would have will be removed based upon amendment number two. 
Amendment number three would uh, ask that the rural bonus densities be removed from the Key Peninsula and Gig Harbor Peninsula community plan areas only. Amendment number four would eliminate the um, provision in the zoning code that allows for mini storage in the employment center designations, both within centers and corridors and within the Fredrickson industrial area. So then we skip a number um, and we go to amendment number six, which would request that cap the parks capital uh, improvement investments be aligned with the areas where the funds are collected. The next amendment will be number 11, and this concerns agricultural tourism, and it's adding some language that references support for farmers. The next amendment is number 12, and it requests that um, the standards for critical areas within shoreline jurisdictions be the same as the upland areas. And the kind of substantive part of that amendment, which that's not showing up in your in your table there, is the uh, the words greater than, potentially greater than are eliminated. So right now what's embedded in the um, in the in the proposal before you, it says that the critical area regulations within shorelines shall be equal or greater within shorelines than the upland area. And this amendment, as I mentioned, would just say they're the same. Amendment number seven is the very popular 128th Street connection <clears throat> between SR 162 and South Hill. It's a study and there's a map that's included as part of that amendment that shows the, the location for this potential road. The next two amendments concern Canyon Road. The first amendment um, plays off an amendment that was adopted at committee that indicates that the uh, Canyon Road Northerly Extension will be phased starting with Milroy Bridge. This amendment goes a little bit further than the amendment that was adopted at committee and indicates that the budgeted uh, right away will stay within the six year CFP. And so um, the department could proceed with acquiring the final right of way that has been uh, identified as part of the CFP. The next amendment is, is not number 15, and that would indicate that the Canyon Road project should be completed in its entirety. When we get to these two amendments this afternoon, I will um, indicate that there are two amendments that concern the same subject matter. And so the council will need to introduce um, amendment number eight. And then if uh, council member Herrera would like to have the uh, amendment number eight modified to satisfy your policy objective that the entire uh, northerly extension be contained within this study, um, you'll need to ask for an amendment to the amendment at that time. And Susan will be helping us navigate that if, if I get confused. Okay. And then the next three amendments also concern the same subject matter with slightly different um, perspectives related to uh, programs and incentives to reduce um, the loss of, of, of working lands and to sequester carbon. Um, so the first amendment kind of is uh, the mellow amendment that includes <clears throat> a reference to 100,000 acres. That's the goal. And it promotes all these conservation uh, concepts for study. Amendment number 13 was sponsored by Councilwoman Kruver, and that would eliminate the reference to the specific 100,000 acre goal. So all the differences between um, the Mellow Amendment and the Kruver Amendment is just the deletion in the Kruver Amendment of the reference to that to that amount. Everything else is exactly the same in the two amendments. And then the last amendment that you will be considering would be um, Council Member Morell's amendment related to the same item. And he would ask that the um, there's some additional language be included related to that 100,000 acres that would indicate that it's up to 100,000 acres that would be considered for conservation. So I, again, nothing has changed really here substantively from yesterday, um, other than we do have now have dates that have been discussed with the department related to the transmittal that are acceptable. So that's, that's a change and, and some um, clarity on that item. But I really wanted you to understand that these things are not going to be changing in terms of the numbers, the, the number related to each amendment. Kind of the reason for that was um, 
you know, we, we've been, we've, we've had these amendments out live on our website for a couple of weeks. They were handed out at the council meeting last week. The public is familiar with these particular items based upon the numbering that was used previously. We're, we're getting emails that say, you know, please don't adopt uh, amendment number seven or whatever it happens to be. And so just to try to retain some consistency there, we're sticking with those, those numbers. And I'm happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kruger. Thank you for the table. It's um, really helpful to see the summary and thank you for grouping them by topic. It'll help us follow the conversation and I think certainly help the public follow the conversation uh, a lot easier. Questions or comments about uh, what's in front of us this afternoon? Councilmember Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I too appreciate this. It might be good to have a few copies in chambers instead of the giant packet of amendments. Just it's easier to follow. Um, Yesterday, I think you mentioned that the um, department had reached out around amendment number seven um, and making it a more broad, and that's the, the 128th street. Um, in this process, we, we are identifying a specific street. So are they then precluded from looking at other possibilities by saying we're just looking at the 128th corridor? No. Because no, we're not, not, this isn't the policy. This is just go look at it and learn, right? This is indicating that the council has a policy preference and you want to ensure that this particular alignment be analyzed as part of the EIS. Okay. But it does not limit the department's ability to look at other options. Okay. The department's recommendation, and they, they sent me an email that I've shared with the sponsors of this amendment that said, hey, listen, we kind of want to not be so specific about 128th. We want to speak to um, any option that might work and what might be most feasible and what might be, you know, kind of the departments following our analysis internal, what the department thinks is the right thing to do. Um, I could not find a sponsor for, and not that it's my job, but I did, I did bring that request to the sponsors of this amendment, number seven. Um, the sponsors all said, I want to run my amendment and the department's aware of that and no one else has asked me to run what they've suggested. So there is nothing here today, okay. at this point at least, related to that request. Okay, and then my second question about the amendments that were pulled, um, I would just look at last week's packet to refresh my memory. They were pulled, they, they, they did not end up in the electronic packet for last week either. Okay. So there's just missing numbers from last week but that just kind of adds to the confusion. And so I just wanted to note that you're, you don't see, I don't know, you don't see a 10 here, right? Yep. There, there's several that are just missing because prior to the council meeting last week, members were asking to have them pulled out of the packet for council's consideration. Okay. It might be good to level set with public when we introduce this tonight, just cause it's normally it's not as complicated to, to do this, so. Thank you for all your work on this and to the team that was supporting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Other questions or comments about the amendments that are in front of us? Councilmember Morell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this, I guess, is a technical question pertaining to the order of which the amendments come before us. Um, in all the other amendments, uh, the lower number seems to take precedence in the order, but when it comes to 16, 13, and five, it seems like I would assume 16 will be read first and then everything else will have to be an amendment to the amendment. Whereas if I remember right, council member Kruger had her amendment in before 16 was well, put in the system. Actually, your number five was the first. So the way that the staff operates is we 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 just put numbers on these thing as on these amendments as they're as they come to us. At least that's how I've always operated. Right. So the first member to come to me and say, "Hey, Mike, I'd like you to draft up an amendment related to this item." That's number one, and and so on. Um, in this case, following the study session yesterday and that discussion, I, I grouped the amendments. Um, I guess. Uh, in a way that made the best sense to me in terms of navigating the, the meeting. And so in this example, 16, 13, and five was based upon the language of each individual amendment, recognizing that we were gonna need to amend 
a previous amendment that was on the table and this made the most sense. So the mellow amendment is kind of the, 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 the broadest. It, 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 it contains the, the most language describing the, the policy intent. Um, the Kruver amendment then simply would eliminate the reference to the 100,000 acres. So, so that's why I showed that being second, because that would be, you know, Councilman Kruver would say, I would like to amend the amendment on the table by removing the reference to 100,000 acres. So it's simple, right? Everyone can see what's happening. You vote that up or down. And then I left yours last because you're, you had said, well, let's just, let's go up to, and it made more sense to me, at least from a staff's perspective to think about it that way. If the, if the Kruver amendment were to pass, your amendment's not necessary was, was my thinking because now the 100,000 acres is gone. Mm. But, you know, I, I guess it's a question for Susan. I mean, I think, I believe that any of these three could be offered up in that moment when we get to the time where 16 is, 16, 13, or five are all basically ready. To, they're the last amendments that are still standing. So what does the council want to get onto the table first? And the staff can navigate an amendment to any of the amendments related regarding what's on the table. But it, if yours is first, I guess, Councilman Morell, it'll be a little more complicated to re, you know. I think Mr. Oh, it's just two words. <laughs> No, if yours if yours passes and there's no amendment to the amendment, we're good. Mm -hmm. But if yours were to get if there were to be discussion, it would be more complicated. Thank you. I think you explained the intent of the uh, order well. Um, Sixteen tries to bring together both thoughts of thirteen and five, and um, the discussion that I've heard. So that that's that is also why the order. I think it's it, it tries to be the compromise of the policy uh, intent and direction of the council that I've heard. Councilmember Kruver. Th thank you, Chair. I just wanted to say it was my intent to be added on to number seven. That's all. Thank you, Chair. I thought I had, but guess not. We'll get we'll get you on to seven. Thank you. Other questions or comments about the amendments that are in front of us? Councilmember Morrell. I guess uh, there again, uh, Ms. Long will have to kind of help navigate some of these uh, parliamentary issues that, that come up. Um, mine is not necessarily speaking to the amendments, but what is the expectation of today's meeting? As far as are we going to pass amendments? Are we going to vote on amendments? Or are we just what are we going to do? I guess that's wherever in the order of today's agenda you can tell me. Thank you, Councilman Morrell. Um, my intention is for us to consider as many amendments as we think we can consider today. Um, uh, consider them. Uh, which means vote on them, um, consider uh, as many of them as we can, um, still determining what the um, what the right course of action is for another public hearing. I feel like we've had a public hearing last week. Um, if we don't have uh, all seven members um, today, uh, there's the chance we continue again for another week. Um, so, that is still in discussion. Uh, we will do a public hearing uh, whenever council is ready to do final action on the resolution, which is a study. But we will um, we will do a, another public hearing when council is ready to do final action. If that's this week, then we will do a public hearing. If it's uh, next week, then we will do a public hearing. Um, so in short, um, I anticipate us considering as many amendments as uh, as we can today so that we can dispose of them and we can get closer to um, a final direction on the environmental impact statement direction. Councilman Morrell. Does considering mean we're going to vote on amendments? Yes. Okay. Other questions or comments? Mr. Taylor, um, I have a question for you. Um, we have a lot of 
um, community feedback um, on uh, the Canyon Road uh, extension project. Um, there's some feedback we're getting. I, I think it's, um, I, I think there's some information from the federal government that hasn't made its way to local governments and uh, other important stakeholders. Um, there's conversation out there that if we don't do the whole 400 some odd million dollar project as once conceived in 1992, then we're gonna have to repay whatever federal funds we got uh, to do early phases of the project. For example, we're in the middle of right-of-way acquisition for the project and we got some federal funds for right-of-way. If we don't do the whole shebang, um, we'll have to re return those federal funds. My understanding is that's not accurate um, and we have some, some guidance from, um, from the federal government and Puget Sound Regional Council. So can you clear up very clearly for us, clear up if, if we um, decide to phase the project and do the right-of-way phase and focus on the Milroy Bridge, and do what we can with, with uh, the resources we have, will we have to return federal funds? So thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll do, I'll do my best here, and I can probably f provide more information this afternoon as needed. Uh, so the question has to do with the, uh, the grant money, the federal funding that was received for the Canyon Road Northly Extension Project. That project received approximately $5.8 million of federal funding. The award was made in 2014. At the time that the award was made, there was a provision in the U.S. Code, United States Code, that uh, required that a project progress, a federally funded prog project progress to the next phase. So in this case, uh, right-of-way acquisition within 10 years of receiving the funding award. If that progress wasn't achieved, then the uh, U.S. Code required repayment of the funds that were received. There were processes to request extensions, but but that that was the really the issue. So we received the county received the money in 2014. The 10 year date is 2024. The money was received for preliminary engineering. So the county would need to progress to right of way and then ultimately to project completion. So that's the question that was posed. I know that the members, I think, received information from the department on that, including a, a memorandum from the State Department of Transportation dated 2014 that addresses that topic. Uh, I recently received information, close of business yesterday from PSRC regarding a change in federal law, this was a change that resulted, that was included within the Infrastructure and Investment uh, Jobs Act, the IIJA, that repealed that provision in the United States Code requiring repayment. Um, so I have a memo from the Federal Highway Administration on that topic that was prepared in 2022, shortly after that change was made, that's providing instructions to their regional, regional administrators on how to deal with the repayment requirement. Um, I'm in the process of transmitting that information to the department. I haven't sent it yet. I was going to send it right after this study session uh, today, uh, but that's that's the subject. And so with that in mind, um, you know, earlier staff, both at the department level and at council, had stated that there's a fair amount of uncertainty regarding whether or not repayment would be needed if the project didn't progress to completion within 10 years. With this Federal Highway Administration guidance and, and change in law, I think that level of uncertainty is reduced considerably. <laughs> and so that's the information that um, I'll be providing to the department for their for the department's review. I'm not certain the department was aware of the change. Um, PSRC staff indicated that the change was something that went unnoticed by many local governments because of the complexity of the IJA and and this provision was, you know, maybe not as well advertised or, 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 or seen by local government. So, so that's, Mr. Chair, I don't know if that adequately answers the question, but that's the information that I have. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing the information we have from the federal government, Puget Sound Regional Council, that we will not have to repay funds. Um, appreciate you doing that and forwarding the information to the department. Any other questions about any of the amendments that are in front of us. Okay. 
Councilman Rome. Another uh, a question directed at uh, Ms. Long. If, if a member wanted to pull an amendment, you can, you can do that up until the time that the amendment is introduced or when it's introduced, you could pull it. How, how do you, how do you look at that? So um, any amendment can be removed from the packet um, at, at any time. If you decide uh, not to move an amendment, that's fine. You don't have to. If an amendment is moved and seconded, it belongs to the body. So a single member can't withdraw it, but it would have to be with agreement of the body to withdraw it at that point. Okay. Okay. Just making sure I understand the rules. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. We're going to move on to item number three, which is a uh, our weekly update on the many external boards and commissions that council serves on. We'll begin as always with Mr. Taylor. All right, uh, good afternoon. Just one item to report on for the Puget Sound Regional Council, and that's the General Assembly meeting on May 30th. I know I've spoke about this before. If you haven't registered and you're interested in attending, there's a link on their website to allow you to register. Um, that is at 1030 at the Seattle uh, um, Conf Convention Center, May 30th couple of items that are going to be addressed in terms of business. One is the adoption of the budget and work program for the for the biennium. The second is election of officers. And then there'll be a, a presentation on uh, regional transportation safety. So the regional uh, uh, transportation safety plan. This is um, the regional version or iteration or our cousin to the county's effort on Vision Zero. It's the safe system approach to the transportation system. It's a significant push at the state and federal and local levels. So there'll be a presentation of the, in the regional context on that particular item. <clears throat> and that's all that I have. The, there aren't any uh, board meetings uh, this week of the PSRC. That is their, their major item as their general assembly coming up um, next week. So. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Questions on Puget Sound Regional Council activities? I don't see any. Are there any other updates from boards and commissions? Councilmember Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. Um, RCC met uh, last week on Wednesday, and because we love it, we started to work on um, our bylaws next. So, um, and then I wanted to update everybody that I believe almost every jurisdiction has signed on, gone through their council process. Um, so they're working on the digital signatory part or portion of it, but we are very close to being completely done with RCC and we're gonna start working on bylaws next. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other updates? Um, the uh, Washington State Association of Counties, thank you for that. Um, do you have anything more to share? Uh, We're good? Or I, I think, well, I shared that I read a proclamation yesterday. Yeah. Um, but as, as far as where we are, um, there were um, several boards and commissions being appointed to. There were several that they didn't have the required number of uh, council members um, to to fill out those appointment processes that go to the governor. Um, and so you may get a, another email if somehow you magically have time. Um, they are looking for some other volunteers to um, fill out some of those processes. Um, as a, we had continued conversation about the future of WASAC as it stands, um, we continue to have really good dialogue. And um, I know that uh, Chair Mello then kind of experienced what that what the new way of doing business around LSC, which was one of the really big sticking points when it came to um, how WASAC functions actually did decision making uh, this first time around that. And I'll leave that to him to kind of discuss, but we still don't formally have um, bylaws adopted. That will happen. And then the other part was a conversation around holding our general membership meeting, which typically has been in November um in june because there is a, a a piece of our bylaws that say if you have not completely paid your dues you are no longer a voting member 
and several counties, including Pierce, have not fully paid our dues intentionally. Um, and so there was discussion around hosting this meeting. Um, my understanding is, is that it will happen in June and we can get the date out um, and it will be treated as our, I'm going to call it annual meeting part A. <laughs> and then we will come back and have an annual meeting part B to adopt our budget um, and those kinds of things, because there's decisions that impact the budget that we will need to know the answers to based on what comes out of the bylaws, because there are several jurisdictions that are very interested in the future of how this organization runs, including Pierce. Um, and so that right now is currently the plan that we will uh, break our annual meeting into two parts and do our regular business in the November meeting. And we'll do this, basically look at our bylaws and how things are going to run uh, in the in, in the time frame while we have all the jurisdictions as members. So I will leave it at that. And if you want to update on LSC, probably worth doing. Thank you. Thank you for reporting out on the WASAC board meeting, Councilmember Hitchin. Um, the Legislative Steering Committee did meet um, the, the next two days uh, last week, and the Legislative Steering Committee um, reviewed close to 50 different proposals brought forward by different counties throughout the state, narrowed it down to seven to be priority actions. This does not mean this is all that WASAC is going to work on, but this is what we will lead on and our staff will take priority on. Those tons of things WASAC and its members will respond to, be a part of, but in terms of what it prioritizes and leads, um, it would be these seven topics. The first is um, new and flexible county revenue to deliver core county services like public safety. Number two, funding for indigent defense. Number three, which doesn't really affect us, but affects a lot of smaller counties, is um, funding for rural county coroners. Number four, uh, requiring um, FSEC um, and energy facility siting count. And Ms. Marie? It's, it's the council that um, cites energy facilities, uh, clean energy facilities. Um, and, uh, so the, the, and, and so I'm sorry for missing my place um, because I could not get the FSEC uh, acronym correct, but um, uh, energy facility siting environmental Com commission? Evaluation. Evaluation. Council. Council. The priority is to require FSEC to comply with state and local development requirements. They, they need a better acronym. Mm -hmm. uh, to comply with state and local development requirements and or providing liability and appeal protections for local permitting agencies. Again, more of a Western Washington issue, but also a coastal issue as clean energy facilities are um, trying to be cited in some predictable way in Washington state um, there's significant concern in coastal counties, eastern Washington counties, central Washington counties, about how siting energy facilities interacts with comprehensive plans um, and local permitting um, inconsistencies. So trying to, trying to work that out, how you get some predictability in siting energy facilities and, and all, the, all the interactions there with, with local permitting agencies. So that's priority four. The next, so those two, um, funding of rural, for rural county coroners and FSEC compliance with uh, local development authority, um, those, are really, th those are not major Pierce County issues directly, um, but they're important to many. The, the last three um, are quite important to Pierce County in, in addition to the first two I mentioned. So the last three are creating accountability in the behavioral health continuum of services by improving contractual standards for re-procurement. Um, so it has to do with our managed care organizations and behavioral health uh, contracts. Priority six is addressing county housing access and affordability. Realize that's a broad topic. Now, these are just priority statements. The work to come is for the association staff to work it with 
groups of members who have high interest in these to further flesh out what does the priority mean? What, what, are, what exactly are we advancing? So this is just the idea right now on purpose. The seventh priority is funding the preservation and maintenance of the county transportation system. I'll, I'll forward this to all members to make sure they have uh, what was identified as the top seven priorities by WASAC for the next two years so that you can have this information. More work to come during the summer and early fall on fleshing out these ideas and coming to agreement on what the actual idea is all about. Does anyone have any questions about that? Any other external boards and commission updates? Okay, under church topics, I don't have anything additional that we're not gonna cover in other business. So we're gonna move right into other business. We're gonna move right into our communication manager and public information officer update, Mr. Dominique. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the council. Uh, Brian Dominique, communications manager for the office. Um, just a few quick updates. Uh, there's two proclamations in your packet. Um, Women's Veterans Day and then Pet and Service Animal Appreciation Month. Those will be read on June 11th and they're headed to the Rules and Operations Committee um, for review next Monday. So next Rules and Operations Committee meeting. Um, and then on the 28th, we'll be proclaiming um, June Ride Transit Month. Um, so I'll be putting the signatures on that on Thursday. So if there's anyone that doesn't want their signature on that, please let me know and I'll make sure it doesn't doesn't get placed. Um, and then um, still working on the Roy City Council appointee. Uh, I haven't received any applications as of yet, but I'm exploring some different ways to get the word out there. Specifically, we're going to have some Facebook groups that we can share the share the news in. So um, <clears throat> continue to work that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Hopefully we have our ad hoc committee. Hopefully we have some work for our ad hoc committee that we appointed <laughs> yesterday. Um, and they get some applications to review. Any questions for Mr. Dominique? Thank you. And as noted, those proclamations are there for review. If you have suggestions, please get with sponsors and or Mr. Dominique and um, we'll uh, continue to advance that. Item number B as in boy, we have a discussion of proposal R2024-167. This is the Consolidated Permit Review Grant Program this is a, I'm going to ask Mr. Taylor to remind us why this is uh, in front of us. And the, the purpose certainly is to have discussion now because uh, our, our calendar does not allow this item to get to committee. And so in order to meet uh, uh, deadlines that are in front of the, of, the, of the county and potentially take advantage of this, um, we had to move it right to final. But I wanted to make sure that council had an opportunity to understand what is going on, get their questions answered, and have good discussion before it went to final. So, Mr. Taylor, can you please brief us? Uh, thank you. As the chair notes, this resolution will be on your consent agenda for today for introduction and with a final hearing date before the council of next Tuesday, May 28th. It's not going to committee as it stands right now on the consent agenda. So that's a very quick turnaround. It's a week right. between introduction and, and final action. Okay. Uh, council can do that. It's a resolution, so it's not subject to the 13th requirement that you're familiar with for ordinances, but it's still very quick turnaround. Um, the resolution itself is a requirement to receive money, uh, grant funds from Department of Commerce to support changes in the county's permitting system to meet uh, requirements of uh, Senate Bill 5290. This is a consolidated permit review process. That grant uh, would provide the county with $187,500 over two years to support modifications to our permitting system to accomplish the goals of, that, uh, of the consolidated permit review. In the Community Development and Environment Committee yesterday, there was a presentation on the workflow improvement project. This is related to that effort. It provides the funding to support the implementation of a number of the items that were identified uh, yesterday and were discussed. Um, so we wanted to brief you out on it today because it's not going to committee. We do have Director Tatatson from the Planning and Public Works Department 
on the in the Zoom lobby to provide you with more information and answer your questions. So with that, Mr. Chair, if there are any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'll have Ms. Uh, Tatatson uh, carry it from here. Thank you, Georgia Tatatson. Let's move uh, to you. Thank you for being with us. Uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you well. Okay. Are there questions about the resolution that I can answer? Could you do a briefing, please? Um, sure. We submitted a pre- uh, Assume that, uh, uh, sorry, uh, let me set it up for you. Um, council has a lot going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, assume no one's read it. Okay. So we <laughs> did submit a pre-application um, approval request for this grant. Uh, it is a Department of Commerce state grant, basically an incentive for local governments to, to try and conduct consolidated review for residential building permits only and get to approval within 90 calendar days. So uh, it is a very short turnaround because the commerce guidance only came out uh, at the last minute. Application window closes on May 31st. And part of the application, um, we must have a resolution from our legislative body committing to this. So as a department, I'm very comfortable committing to the terms of Commerce's grant, which basically says we will conduct consolidated team reviews of building permits and be able to get to a final decision within 90 calendar days. All of the things that we've already um, put in place with our organization and our software that we're doing, we will have no problem meeting. That. Also, there is no consequence if we don't meet it. Uh, it's a quarterly payout of the grant from July 1st to June 30th. Each quarter, they would provide us uh, a fourth of the money to cover our expenses, to, to put all the new policies and procedures in place, any uh, software upgrades we need to make our eligible expenses, any third-party contract yeah. review is an eligible expense. So my intent is to uh, take advantage of the funding opportunity to offset some of our costs to do things that we are planning to do. And we'll have to provide Commerce with a quarterly report. So what you'd be committing to in this resolution is that um, we will, starting July 1st, the reporting period will begin. Three months later, the department will submit a report to Commerce telling them how many building permits we processed, how many were conducted under this consolidated review concept, and then how many were completed <clears throat> within 90 days. So we'll do that each quarter. And uh, if we don't meet the targets after the first quarter, we would go into a 90 day probation period. So at the six month mark, if we still aren't able to do 90 day approvals, um, then they would stop sending us the funding. Those are the terms of the grant. And it's a one year trial period, basically, one year commitment. Thank you, Director Tatasin. Questions or comments by council members? Council Member Coover. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Director Tatasin. I'm, I'm wondering on this, is there any kind of a measurement? Like, let's say all of a sudden restrictions are lifted and you get bombarded with, you know, 3,000 applications. You can't, you know, versus times might be slow and maybe you're getting a couple hundred for the month or 50 or, I, you know, I don't know what kind of number. Is there anything that measures that kind of burden or lack of burden on how you're processing and setting up the system. Because it could be where, you know, heck, you're getting them all done in, in three weeks, but that's because you didn't have anything to really much to process versus getting a bad report because it's taking longer, but that's because you had a bombardment of, of applications. Is there anything that keeps that in check? Well, it's just um, the facts, right? We're re reporting the actual data to Commerce and they would evaluate our progress based on the facts. 
So the report includes how many applications were received and how many were approved and the number of days that it took us um, to approve mm -hmm. each one. If, if we don't meet the 90 day target, like I said, we will then enter a 90 day probation period and we'll try again and then we'll submit another report. And if after six months, we still can't get to an average of 90 days, then they would stop funding us. It, it just seems difficult where the complexity of the different permits would make a difference in how you can report. I just I'm kind of concerned with the different parameters on that. Well, and then I'm wondering, go this, ahead. Let me just clarify, this is strictly limited to residential building permits only. So that means single and right. homes. Because sometimes that they can get complex too, and not like commercial, but still. And then I'm wondering, is there a measurement on customer service? I just, what comes to my mind, maybe I'm wrong, is that they, the customer, well, I don't want to say customer, the constituent has to be more prepared with all of the work to, before they can turn it in. And I'm concerned there might be a lack of concern for the constituent being helped or you just wouldn't have the capacity to help them because you would be so busy with the others, other mandates. You'd still be able to have like pre-construction meetings, things like that. I just am concerned with how the constituent is going to be um, addressed when there's that kind of pressure. Right. With respect to the commerce grant, uh, they put no restrictions on what we do or don't do. They just require us to report on how fast we process residential building permits. Certainly, it's up to us to balance all of the needs of all of our customers. Um, and I think because we have prioritized residential product line in all of our new um, customer guides and application forms, and the online development guide that we're building, it's it's only going to help people navigate the process faster. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilor Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. Um, Director, I wasn't able to listen to the CDEC meeting yesterday, but I'm kind of assuming this this grant is helping with the permit improvement program that you kind of outlined yesterday. And is that correct? It will help offset the costs of the work we're doing. Yes. Okay. Okay. So work we were already doing, but we're going to get some support to help pay for some of that work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Dr. Tatasin, can you just restate simply one more time um, what uh, you anticipate spending the grant program dollars on? Um, what, what it's going to help resource for your department um, to make things work better? Sure. Um, there are four categories of eligible expenses. The couple that I think most apply to us are our staff time to develop um, internal procedures and policies. Also, I'm thinking the third-party review contracts that we have, we can amend them to do this consolidated review. So those are eligible costs as well. If we send residential permits out for third-party review, we can get reimbursed for those. And then also any uh, software upgrades. We're, we are planning to invest quite a bit in our PALS Plus um, software so we can get reimbursement for those eligible costs. So kind of those three areas. Thank you for summarizing that. Um, thank you for briefing us. Again, this is not going to be going to committee as it normally would because of the timeline that's in front of the department. And uh, it will be on our consent agenda for scheduling and up for final action next week. So if you have further questions, please get with Mr. Taylor. He can certainly help facilitate any answers to those questions. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Is there any other business by council members? I don't see any. Uh, Ms. Long, is there any other business for council? Today, thank you. Seeing no other business before the Pierce County Council in Tuesday study session, we are adjourned.